I can almost guarantee that if you stick around to the end of this tutorial, just this 10 minute tutorial, it's not a lot of time, your skills are gonna grow exponentially. I think you're gonna be surprised at what you can achieve, whether you're talented or not, whether you know anything about 2D art or not. You're gonna be very surprised at the end of this tutorial because I have a few tricks that I've learned over the last decade of being a full-time game developer and making indie games. So let's jump inside of Photoshop and get started. We're gonna start with a 1920 by 1080 canvas, but we're actually gonna flip that into portrait mode. So 1080 by 1920. This is just 1080p flipped on its side. And we're actually gonna eventually make this basically a square, but let's, let's start with this tall 1080p canvas. And by the way, guys, as I search Google for a reference image, by the way, that's totally fine. We're gonna do a T-pose reference image. I think I might use something like this. And you can definitely do the same. Just go to Google and search a T-pose for a cartoon character. Throwing in reference and front view is gonna help you in finding a character that you think might look like yours. You'll notice his hands are going outside the frame. That's totally fine. I'm gonna go to the canvas size here and I'm just gonna, going to stretch the width to about 140%, uh, maybe a little bit bigger. You could do another 20%. There we go. So we have our reference image here. I'm gonna crop it. And I'm going to simply set the opacity to be really low. I'm gonna scale up the white in the background, and then I'm gonna lock that layer. All right, I'm gonna create a new layer, and we're gonna use simple shapes to mimic Again, just the reference here, just mimic the size of the arms and the legs. This is really, really important that you mimic an illustration that you really like because honestly, you're gonna otherwise have to guess and check the right size of everything. And for me, I'm really bad at that. So I like to just take very simplistic shapes, in this case, a circle. And I'm gonna take the size of this head here for the body, for the arms, for the neck, I'm actually gonna use the rounded rectangle vector tool here. I'm gonna set the radius to something like 60. And you'll see now we have more rounded of a rectangle here. The reason I wanna do that is so that if the arms are moving and rotating, we don't get any edges clipping out of the character's body. So before we are okay with the shape of our character, the general outline, we need to just zoom out. If you zoom out and things feel good, if your mind's eye feels like this looks kind of almost like a real human being, or maybe a child, then you're on the right track. If you zoom out and it doesn't look right, if certain things feel long or maybe too short or too fat, then you need to try again. For me, it looks perfect. I love the way this looks. Okay, let's save our Photoshop file. I'm just gonna name this player. I wanna know what colors to use. I also wanna know how this character looks in the context of my art, because I actually want to use the level art as the context for determining how the character's gonna look. I like to just bring it up about like that. It doesn't have to be perfectly sized. This is just a reference image. That's all we're doing here. I just need a reference of all the different colors. And I like to just blur it just a little bit so it doesn't distract as I'm working. But those are the colors. So what this means is we can actually figure out how the character looks in the context of the world so that they pop. And you definitely want them to pop. You want them to have contrast. We're gonna make his clothing orange and maybe make his face a sort of a pale pink. So let's lock the background. And before we get started, I want to go ahead and rasterize all of our limbs and our head. I'm gonna start with the chest. I'm gonna start with the most vibrant color and then sort of work my way out. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna mask it over top and I'm gonna put that orange. Let's do the same with, uh, well, his arm. I think that's fine. I'm gonna just fill that in and cut it. So now we have just a short sleeve shirt. Pretty cool. Same over here. If you want, you can just duplicate the left arm when you're finished with it. But because this is so simplistic, I don't mind just doing the work here and just making the right match the left and vice versa.
I'm actually gonna create a shape of the general shape of his hair. So something like that. And then I'm just gonna rasterize this. I'm gonna select that shape and actually go to select inverse. And I'm going to just fill in right here. So I'm actually gonna take the rounded rectangle and it's gonna be something like this. The general shape, the general colors, we need to think of one thing, one thing that will make this character really stand out. What is that one thing that will make us identify with this player or this character a little bit more? In my case, I'm actually just gonna give him a backpack. All right, now that we know that the player looks great in the context of the scene, we can start adding shading. Let's just start with the chest. So the light is coming from the top left hand corner. So in this case, I'm just gonna add using black here, just a subtle gradient to the right side here. Now let's create another layer and just do a little bit more of a subtle shade like that. Drop it down. And we're just gonna slowly add these gradients to every portion of the right side of the character's body. Uh, the way you do this, this just takes practice here, um, is just think about where the light is coming from. Again, it's coming from the top left hand corner. So for the most part, all the gradients are gonna be on the right side of the player. However, for things like the ears, because those are sort of embedded inside of that circle, the shadow is actually gonna come from the left side. Anytime something is sort of embedded and hiding from the light, you actually just invert the shadow. That's about it. Now here I'm using the same principles as the shadow, but in this case it's a highlight, and so it's on the left side of the character. We're gonna use a white gradient, and we're gonna set the blend mode to overlay, and that's all it's gonna do is just gonna make the light sort of saturate the color below it, and it makes it look a little bit more interesting and also a little bit more realistic. All right, now you have the backpack, you've got the head, you've got the eye, and then another eye, you've got the mouth, you've got the hands hands slash arms <laughs> and then also the feet slash calves and then your thighs right and then the body so those are our objects so now we're ready to just well name them properly so i'm going to go ahead and name the layers this is going to be the mouth it's going to be eye left eye right i'm just using the letter r and the letter l this is going to be hand right this is gonna be foot left. This is gonna be foot right. This is gonna be hand left, arm left. This is gonna be body. This is gonna be arm right. This is gonna be leg left. And it's gonna be leg right. This is our head, and this is our neck, and our backpack. Very good. We don't need this layer anymore down here, so I'm gonna unlock it and delete it. We don't need this reference image here, delete it. And we don't even need the background. So now we have our character T-Pose. I'm gonna nudge him into the center just to be nice and perfect and clean here. I'm gonna save him out. And there we have it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. It really means a lot that you stuck around and tried out this tutorial. If you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe for more content like this about game development, and also leave a comment, what am I saying? A comment below, and I'll try and answer as best as I can. 